Good morning. Let us worship God this morning. Our first hymn is hymn number 132. 132, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. It's nice to see all these young at heart people here this morning. Uh, so, uh, boys and girls and, and mums and dads, uh, this morning I'm thinking about, and I know it's hard to imagine this, but if, if imagine you were, it was very, very hot outside, <laughs> and the sun was shining, and you were really, really thirsty, really, really thirsty, uh, what would your favourite drink be? What would your favourite drink be? Now, before the adults join here, <laughs> join in, can I say it's non-alcoholic we're talking here. It's non-alcoholic. What would your favourite drink to quench your thirst? What would it be? What do you think it would be? Yes. Milk. 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 That's a pretty good answer, and, and milk is pretty good for you. That's a good answer. Any other answers over here? Yes, we go. Yes. What, what would you have? Juice, juice, yes, I would juice. Any particular flavour of juice? Orange juice? Black currant. Oh, black currant. Oh, black currant juice. Well, uh, boys and girls, I went on a website. I'm a silver surfer, a silver surfer. It's called Heart Matters, okay? It's called Heart Matters. And here you discover the drinks that are really good for you, but also the drinks that are not so good for you, Okay. So, hands up if you enjoy an ice cream milkshake. Yeah, Definitely. yeah, yeah. Not so good for you. <laughs> don't have so many. Don't have so many. It looks delicious, but don't have so many. The next one. Cappuccino. Oh, cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> What is it, age seven, knowing what a <laughs> cappuccino is? I never knew what a coffee was at age. That's a great answer. That is a great answer. That's not actually, a, well, it says flavored coffee. That is a hot chocolate. I just had a hot chocolate the other night there. It was comforting, comforting. But it's not good for you. It's not good for you. Um, the next thing down, not so good for you, 
an energy drink. An energy drink. Do you notice all the young people now drink energy drinks? But they're not really that good for you. Now, here comes the next one. (gasps) Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Do you know how many teaspoons of sugar are in a one glass of Coca-Cola or a can of Coca? Seven is the right <laughs> answer, Alan. Hey, your wife's been going on at you as well. Huh? Seven. Seven. So, Coke's not really very good for you. We're, we're getting better, though. Uh, this next one really, really surprised me. Well, do you know, it's called tonic water. And I thought tonic water would be quite good for you, but it's, wait, it's not really good for you. Let's try the next one. Lemonade. Yeah, that's fizzy lemonade, I think. Fizzy. Or diluting juice. Let's go to the next one. That's diluting juice. We're getting into ones that are not quite so bad for you now. Next one. Tea, coffee with added sugar. You're not really supposed to add the sugar. We're not really supposed to add. I know someone in the congregation here. He's not here today. (laughs) I'm not going to tell you my lips are sealed. But see Mr. McPhail. He takes a lot of sugar in his tea. I'm surprised at that. Right. Just a few more to go, boys and girls. Fruit juices. So, mm, you just got to be very careful about that. The next one was sugar-free drinks. The next one, oh, well, well, that's sugar-free drinks. Next one, tea or coffee, no added sugar. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, according to Heart Matters, what is the best drink for you. Water. It's the right answer. It's the right answer. Water is the best thing for your heart. And we are so blessed, boys and girls, <laughs> so blessed by the amount of water we have. And what we'll be looking at later on is a story. We, we read the story. Of, I love when Jesus meets people. Jesus was very, very thirsty. And of course, he didn't have a tap that he could put the water on. He had to go to a well, and he encountered a lady there. And it was a very, very revealing encounter because Jesus said at that well, I am the living water. I am the living water. And I think what that reminds us, boys and girls, when it comes to the best thing for us, although there's lots of choices out there, the different people we could follow, different philosophies, different things we could do. It's Jesus who is the best way for us, and it's Him that provides us with the hope and grace and faith to meet each day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, living water, we bless You because still today You provide us with refreshment at this time in particular, fill us, we pray, with your hope that we might serve you well and serve others. And this we ask in your name. Amen. So, boys and girls, I'm looking up trying to try and get a good hymn about water, and I was taken back to when I was a wee boy a long time ago, and I went to uh, Sunday school a long time ago, and I was taught this song. It's not about water in the desert. It's actually, this is, this is one that we understand more in the west of Scotland, having had the wettest February on record. It's called, The Wise Man Built His House Upon the Rock. And remember, it's when the rains come tumbling down. So, I think you'll be able to take this away for us, will you, Stephen? With confidence, that's what I like to say, right. Okay, we'll have everyone standing up.
Okay, boys and girls, I think it's Fundy School time. So, ladies and gentlemen, intimations are in your hands. There's always an encouragement to, to read them, keep up with our family news uh, here in Alloway Parish. Uh, tea and coffee served in the halls between services today. Uh, the Congregational Board, uh, there will be the stated annual meeting. Very important intimation to say to you, just one service, just one service next week uh, at 10.30. Thereafter, we have the stated annual meeting and that's the election to the board. If I can read this edict to you, uh, a meeting of the communicants in a role held here Sunday 22nd at 11.30 for the purpose of electing, if so resolved, certain of the number over 18 years of age to act along with the minister and elders on administrating the financial affairs of the church. At this meeting, Congregational Board will submit a statement of accounts for the preceding year together with proposals, if any, for disposal of surplus uh, revenue. So that is the last reading of that edict. Now, if we can return to our intimations, there are one or two things uh, to be changed and one or two additional things to be said. Uh, church Easter leaflets uh, are now in the vegetable ready for distribution uh, to every house in the parish. If you can help with this, uh, that would be uh, very much appreciated uh, as we head for Easter time. So Monday, we have the property committee meeting. Uh, Tuesday, we have parent and toddlers uh, and then in the evening at 7.30, we have the Lent group. We have the Lent group, uh, which has been reshuffled uh, out of its Wednesday position because on Wednesday, you have the friendship group uh, and we want as many people as possible to go. There will also be the winter coffee morning in the morning, 10.30 a.m. And I have a funny feeling uh, that will be the last of the winter uh, coffee mornings. On to Thursday, we have the quiet time of prayer, uh, parent and toddlers and then just a reminder to you again next Sunday is Mothering Sunday uh, we will have uh, one service and we will have the sacrament of baptism um, at that service I think maybe at this stage the rest of the intimations pretty much uh, as in print um, I do think ladies and gentlemen maybe I should just um, outline something which I did send to office bearers which is uh, to encourage office bearers, but members of the church too, to look on uh, the church website, the central website, uh, which has advice for congregations uh, and church members uh, concerning the coronavirus. Um, at the moment, uh, we believe our acts of worship will continue uh, until further notice. Um, as you see, we're, we're not encouraging use of hymn books, uh, and we request that intimation sheets will be taken home. Uh, and this morning, just about five minutes ago, uh, we decided to follow best practice. It's only encouragement. Uh, we're not actually going to pass the offering plate uh, along uh, from person uh, to person. Now, can I just say right away, that doesn't mean we don't want your offering. <laughs> That's perhaps the most important thing. Yes, we would like your offering, but it will probably be done at, at a retiring uh, situation. So the elders will be there. Uh, to make sure that you put your offering in. But no, I don't mean that. But if you would like to give your... I know that many don't give uh, in the open plate anyway, but that's how we're going to be dealing uh, with the open plate. Um, many nursing homes are in lockdown, uh, so we have cancelled musical memories uh, until further notice. Uh, leisurely lunches also uh, are cancelled until further notice. Uh, we had messy church yesterday, a lot quieter, uh, but we will probably, Messy Church will probably follow the policy of schools. So if the schools close, then Messy Church will probably uh, close until further notice. We are encouraging elders, but we encourage everyone at this time uh, to be vigilant uh, and keep an eye out for the most vulnerable, uh, for your neighbours as well, to be a good neighbour. I'm sure I don't have to remind you of that. Uh, and as I've said, we continue to pray that this crisis will bring out the best in us, uh, and not the worst. And uh, let us remember we're called to live by faith and not to be overcome uh, by fear. 
And I think we all understand, ladies and gentlemen, there is physical well-being which we have to look after, but there is spiritual well-being as well. Um, I, I was just thinking, a quote that comes to mind, it's not even from Scripture. I think it was Franklin D. Roosevelt who once said, the greatest thing we have to fear is fear itself. I think that's worth carrying around. The greatest thing we have to fear is fear uh, itself. And we know, we know um, that God uh, is with us uh, in all situations as well. Now, it is uh, with regret, completely unconnected for the avoidance of doubt, it is with regret. I do have a couple of deaths uh, to announce within the congregation, uh, that of Reverend James Blythe. Um, Jim died and his service, I will give exact details, they're not absolutely fixed, likely to be a week on Thursday, a service in the church, so I can give you details next Sunday on that. And then the death of Janet Ewan. Uh, to both of these families at this time, uh, we extend our deepest sympathy. Uh, and then I want to just say a, a warm welcome to everyone uh, to church uh, this morning. I can see you're keeping about a yard apart from each other. That's very, <laughs> that's, uh, very helpful. Uh, and <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, if over 70s aren't allowed out for four months, it's going to be gay quiet in here. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be very quiet. Hopefully it's not going to come to that. Hopefully it's not going to come to that. Uh, so I do want you to bid each well, well, but we will use the fist bump. Okay, so give, give the right hand, uh, the, the right fist bump. No, the fellowship, a fellowship fist bump. Give a fellowship fist bump um, at this time. Oh God, you are our God. We seek you and our souls thirst for you. Let us pray. Lord God, you are the fount of life. You bring to us a fullness of life, and in you we find not all that we want, but all that we need. You teach us of your love and grace. When we begin to doubt your presence, when we grumble that your love is unreliable, you still offer us living water. When life's regrets and the bad choices we've made leave us sometimes feeling excluded and unworthy, you offer us living water. When circumstances or the inhumanity of others have left us alone and wounded and hurt, you offer us living water. We thank and praise you, O God, that however we may thirst, whatever we may need to satisfy our souls, you offer it freely and abundantly in your Son. Spirit of God, you desire to grow in us your fruit fruit of love and joy, peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And how much, O oh Lord, we need Your fruit today. Forgive us if our roots of faith are shallow, if our hearts are so restless that our lives fail to bear that fruit. Teach us at this time to drink deeply of your living water. Let this water too cleanse us from all that mars your image within us. And as we daily draw from your well, help us to pass the cup to others who, like us, are thirsty for your grace and meaning and purpose in their lives. Hear this our prayer, and hear us as we join together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So, to remind us of that wonderful uh, encounter that Jesus had, I'm going to invite Christine uh, Bryson to share our reading with us today. readings this morning are taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 4. The first reading is from verse 4 to 26. Now he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a town in Samaria called Sichar, near the plot of ground Jacob had given his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, And Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about the sixth hour. When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, Will you give me a drink? His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as also did his sons and his flocks and herds? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. He told her, Go, call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, You are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What you have just said is quite true. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know, for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know that Messiah, called Christ, is coming. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus declared, I who speak to you am he. Uh, Thank you, Christine. Uh, Before we sing our next hymn, I think it's worth just drawing your attention. Uh, It comes from St. Patrick. Uh, and this coming week uh, will be St. Patrick's uh, Day. I suppose we remember uh, St. Patrick, maybe. Was he a young boy that was stolen from Dumbarton area? We might say that uh, up there. Maybe we remember St. Patrick as the, as the man who cleared Ireland uh, of snakes, allegedly. Maybe we remember him as the man who took the, the, the shamrock and talked about the Father, Son, uh, and Holy Spirit. That might all be true, but I kind of quite liked the blessing of St. Patrick, particularly for us just now. He said, may the strength of God pilot us, may the wisdom of God instruct us, 
May the hand of God protect us, and may the Word of God direct us. So there we go. Hymn number 577. Uh, we remember the witness of St. Patrick, Christ be beside me. We'll continue reading in chapter 4 at verse 27. Just then his disciples returned and were surprised to find him talking with a woman, but no one asked, what do you want or why are you talking with her? Then leaving her water jar, the woman went back to the town and said to the people, come see a man who told me everything I ever did could this be the Christ? They came out of the town and made their way towards him. Meanwhile, his disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. Then his disciples said to each other, Could someone have brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and finish his work. Do you not see four months more and then the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now the reaper draws his wages. Even now he harvests the crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, one sows and another reaps, is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work. You have reaped the benefits of their labor. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed two days. And because of his words, many more became believers. They said to the woman, We no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this man really is the Savior of the world. Amen, and may God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. And our thanks to you, Christine, for sharing these words with us. And now our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Lord God, whose spirit swept over the face of the water at creation, 
Here are prayers for all who suffer from lack of water today. We pray for a just and peaceable sharing of water among nations and peoples. We pray for all who put their lives at risk as they stand with communities who struggle for their lands and forests, rivers and springs. We pray for peace on earth and peace with the earth. We pray for all who seek to rebuild communities shattered by the circle of economic injustice and poverty and violence. As we recall Jesus meeting a woman at the well, we pray for all women who suffer from violence and yet continue to care for family and children, to grow and prepare food, carry water, earn a living and support others. Lord God, we live with an abundance of water. And though at times we do complain, we are mindful of those whose homes have been touched by floods and those whose lands swallowed by the sea. Make us better stewards of your creation, we pray. At this time, O oh Lord, as a pandemic spreads across our world, we do remember with tenderness those who have lost loved ones. We remember with tenderness those who are ill. We uphold before you our National Health Service as it responds to this added pressure. We pray for doctors and nurses in the caring professions who work to help and support people as best they can. We pray for our government in Westminster and Holyrood as they work with the best medical advice to guide us how we should respond. Lord God, so many unknowns. But may this crisis bring out not the worst in us, but the best in us. Let us not be overcome by fear, but strengthened by faith. Let us not forget our responsibility to one another and to the vulnerable and voiceless in our communities. Help us to find ways of keeping in touch. And as we know this virus will spread, we pray for the disruption it causes to normal life. Not just for those whose trips and Business journeys have been cancelled, not just for those who fear for their education and their arrangements. May our inconvenience not blind us to others' loss. And keep us faithful, Lord God. drawing from your well of salvation, finding in you day and daily our tower and strength. Amen. We continue our worship, the hymn number 550, hymn number 550, as the deer pants for the water.
I've shared with you before the story of the lady missionary uh, working with children in the Middle East. Her jeep uh, ran out of petrol, so she calls in uh, to a petrol station, but uh, she had no petrol can, only a, 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 a potty to be able to transfer the petrol into her car. And as she's pouring the petrol into the car with the potty, an Arab sheikh pulls up, fascinated, and says, excuse me, dear lady, although we do not share your religion, we greatly admire your faith. <laughs> I should have said to you, last week was International Day for Women. Maybe it's an indictment upon myself that I made no mention of it, because I've always said I felt that in the church, women haven't always had the best deal. The first lady minister in the Church of Scotland, any idea when that was? 1969. The first lady moderator, 2003. The first lady bishop in the Church of England, 2015. And I can guarantee you not one of us here will live to see the first lady pope. <laughs> now, I smile at that myself, and yet if I take stock of my spiritual life and the people who were probably most influential upon me, and we'll maybe be thinking about this next Sunday as it's Mothering Sunday, it was women rather than men. God couldn't be everywhere, so He invented mothers. If you want conclusive evidence that Jesus actually had a very radical relationship and understanding of women's place in society, then you can do no better than to read what we read this morning. Last week, those of you who can still remember, Nicodemus, the creme de la creme of society, coming to meet Jesus by night. Turn over the next chapter. It's almost a mirror opposite. Jesus, thirsty, goes to a well to drink and encounters this woman. And it's very strange. We know because when Jesus' disciples returned, they were surprised to find Him talking with a woman. For a Jewish man to speak to a woman in public was a breach of social custom. Many Jewish husbands wouldn't even speak to their wives in public. And some of us can't get a word in. But seriously, what a huge social upset. Not only was she a woman, she was a Samaritan. And there was this gulf, this hatred between Jews and Samaritans. In fact, they were very, very close in some ways. It's just the Samaritans only believed in the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Um, they cut themselves off from the book of Psalms and the prophets and other books. Um, they offered, when the Jews returned from their exile, the Samaritans offered to help them rebuild their temple in Jerusalem, but their offer was not accepted. And so they built their own in Mount Gerizim around about 400 B.C. and in 128 B.C., the Jews burned the Samaritans' temple. Jesus was actually called a Samaritan, we read in John chapter 8, by some. It's a bit, I think, like the story of the rabbi in Belfast who was asked if he was a Protestant Jew or a Catholic Jew. A woman in a man's world not a Jewess, but a Samaritan. And then it's pretty clear this was not a delicate, fragrant woman. This was a woman of the world. The fact is, Jesus said, you've had five husbands, and the man you live with is not your husband. 
Again, if we look at the Scripture, we read that Jesus arrived at the sixth hour, and many, many people think that's a little clue. People don't normally go to the well at the sixth hour. That's midday when the sun's hottest. There's a suggestion that this woman was excluded from society. Was she unlucky in marriage? A bit like Liz Taylor? Always the bride, never the bridesmaid. Five husbands. Why, why would Jesus speak to her? Because the reason he's in Samaria is to prove he's the Savior of the world. He's come not just to save the religious He's come to save Jew, Samaritan, men, women, rich, poor. If you knew the gift of God, who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked Him, and He would give you living water. Because we have so much water, we forget how precious water is. Water's needed for life. That's what makes our planet so special. The first thing we look for if we're going to live anywhere else, is there any water in this planet? Water is a gift from above, and so is God's love. Water refreshes, satisfies, and is good for us. And so is our healthy relationship with our master. It's fascinating. A woman, a Samaritan, of no good repute, becomes the first woman, the first person to take the good news of Jesus outside the traditional circle. And why should we be surprised? Why should we be surprised that Jesus so affirmed the place of women when we will be celebrating, God willing, in three or four weeks' time, the message of the resurrection? Who was it first given to? It wasn't given to the disciples. It was given to Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, as well as the unnamed others who accompanied them. So this morning, let's hear it for the girls, but more importantly than that, especially at this time, spiritually, I understand physically, Physical well-being is so important, but so too is spiritual. Let us draw our strength from the water of life. Like a woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could satisfy, and then I heard the Savior speaking, draw from my well that never runs dry. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup and make me whole. Amen. May God add a blessing to this preaching of His Word, to His name, the glory and the praise. And now we worship God in our offering and listen to Stephen as he plays for us. I dreamed I met a Galilean, a most amazing man. He had that look you very rarely find. 
the hunting hunted kind. I asked him to say what had happened, how it all began. I asked again, he never said a word, as if he hadn't heard. And next the room was full of wild and angry men. They seemed to hate this man. They fell on him and then they disappeared again. Then I saw thousands of millions crying for this man. And then I heard them mentioning my name and leaving me the blame. Thanks. Our thanks to see for singing for us. Uh, and that excerpt comes from Jesus Christ Superstar. And that might be of interest to some of you because some of the Lenten studies we're following are inspired by some of the events from that story. Uh, and we'll be dipping into that music. It's the 50th anniversary. It's the 50th anniversary uh, of that musical. Thank, thank you for playing that. So we're going to close our service now. Um, and remember your retiring offering. Uh, but we're going to close our service now. It's hymn number 348, Praise the One Who Braves breaks the darkness and our little postlude, Abba Father.
So may the strength of God pilot us. May the wisdom of God instruct us. The hand of God protect us. The word of God direct us. So go in peace, serve the Lord, and may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all and those whom you love, now and forevermore.